street art is transformative. It can take an ugly wall on the back of a shopping center and turn it into a vibrant gallery of art and ideas. Street art is different than an art gallery. It's more accessible and its scale is massive. Street art can draw visitors to unlikely areas and they can even become tourist attractions on their own. Street art cuts through all the commercial clutter in the landscape, buildings, signs, billboards, all things trying to sell you something. But street art is trying to convey an idea or a feeling. Graffiti is akin to screaming to be heard. Unexpected art can brighten someone's day. It can make them laugh. It can make them smile. It can make them think about an idea. It's not always easy to make street art happen. It requires the artist paint, supplies, funding, and most importantly, approvals. And there's a natural resistance to giving up control, especially if you're a property owner who's had a bad experience with graffiti. But as P.T. Barnum said, no one ever made a difference by being like everyone else. Like a lot of developers, my first experience with graffiti was as an unwanted nuisance. The city would even fine me if I didn't cover it up quickly. Whether it was a gang sign or an expletive, it was a different language that I didn't speak. I just saw it as an affront to property rights, vandalism, someone creating a nuisance that would cost me time and money and energy. City officials said it was a sign of criminal activity and could cause more criminal activity in the area. It was akin to leaving a can of gasoline and matches out. And neighbors saw it as an eyesore. So when spray can street art is permitted, it's very tightly controlled out of fear of what it could become. And sadly, many businesses see street art purely as an advertisement, like a billboard for their business. Many cities feel the same way. They're either using street art for a historical timeline or an amalgamation of things for which they are known. But art isn't an ad. You don't go to Guggenheim to see signage about the museum. But perhaps the biggest fear of street art is that ideas or artwork are dangerous or controversial and therefore should be prohibited or dumbed down to a level that keep people from having to consider controversial ideas. That's the exact premise of Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, a cautionary tale about a future society where ideas are considered dangerous and books are censored or banned or burned. In today's environment, it's not a big leap to consider that possible future. Street art cuts through the visual landscape of buildings, signs, billboards, all designed to sell you something. But street art communicates something much more powerful, emotions and ideas. Dare Coulter is an artist out of Fayetteville that reached out to me, and Dare told me a fantastic story about her grandfather who was a black cowboy. Now, growing up watching Westerns, I saw a lot of John Waynes out there, but I didn't see a lot of African-American cowboys. And Dare wanted to tell that story and let people know that there were black cowboys. Dare wanted to communicate that to young children, that they too could be cowboys, no matter the color of their skin. The Australian artist Adnate, who specializes in painting indigenous peoples, came to North Carolina in 2017 and painted both the Lumbee and the Cherokee tribes. He made it impossible for people not to see forgotten people the original natives of this land. Jex had someone he knew die from a drunk driving accident, Joey DeWeese. And he painted a tribute of him, but that didn't really express the anger he was feeling inside. And he wanted to scream out and say, justice for Joey. And so he approached me and wanted to paint a traditional tag piece where he wrote just hashtag justice for Joey and then provided more information about it. I agreed and we put that on one of the walls downtown, very prominent wall, just that statement. It made an impact. People were asking, what is justice for Joey? 
But then I get a letter from the city saying, that's not allowed, that's graffiti, I better take it down or I'll be fined. That really ticked me off. And what we did instead, we took that same tag, translated that into a digital form and put it on a digital billboard, screaming justice for Joey, like a big mm, back to the establishment and saying, no, this message is important. It's Jack's ability to say it. And he wants to say that and he feels passionate about it. He should be able to. Art can even improve people's outlook for the day. The artist's key detail was painting a piece next to a grocery store. And the people that were walking through seeing this artwork, it just changed their whole demeanor for the day. And that inspired us to create an outdoor gallery beside the grocery store with 60 panels and two walking paths to provide even more opportunity to brighten people's day. This was a commission that Ramon Bardwaj did for me. And the reason I wanted to capture this was to capture that childhood innocence, that sense of creativity. You can hear the children laughing out here and it just, it's such a relaxing feeling. And I think it brings back in me out here what all of us hope to bring back, to find that passion. Elon Musk has a great quote. If you get up in the morning, and you think the future is going to be better, it'll be a bright day. Otherwise, it's not. Street art's very different than a traditional art gallery. You often have to buy a ticket and visit during set hours. You have to dress a certain way. And oftentimes, you feel intimidated. But street art is ephemeral. It's designed to be enjoyed in the moment. You might come out and even see the artist painting the piece. But most importantly, it's more accessible and there are no set hours. The artists are bringing their art to the community, kind of like the old bookmobiles that would bring books to the neighborhood. Street art is designed to reach the general public, not collectors or gallery patrons. Street art can transform ugly places like the back of a shopping center. A place that's often filled with trash people dump, unauthorized graffiti filled with foul language, dumpsters, loading docks, and lots of blank ugly walls that need to be painted. By embracing street art, you can transform that space into a gallery of art and ideas and images and colors. And it will attract visitors who will help deter crime because crime doesn't happen where there's lots of people. It happens in places where criminals feel safe and it's quiet. It brings people who can shop in the area businesses and visit the center. It can create a point of pride in the community and bring art to the masses. P.T. Barnum once said, the noblest art is that of making others happy. So now hopefully you're ready to transform your own wall. You start by selecting a wall and an artist. Then you have to get all the approvals you need from the city, from the building owner, from the business, from any other group that may have a say in things. Gather supplies like spray paint that the artist chooses, bucket paint, prep and paint the wall with a base color that the artist chooses. Then you have to line up lifts and ladders so the artist can get up on the wall and organize things like travel, accommodations, transportation to and from the wall, food, and most importantly, bathrooms. And then you have to do something really difficult. You have to let the artist paint and create without interfering. Think of free range chicken, and now you want free rain artists. That will make for a much happier artist who will create even better work.